Drive is winning good, though. Steven Spielberg was able to uh, accomplish the movie Schindler's List. There were certain movies that he did to become rich so that he can work on what he really wanted to do. Schindler's List was one of them. But after having done the movie, despite it being used as a teaching tool in classrooms, I believe it was Oregon, there was a high school out there that were watching the movie and the kids thought that it was something to be mocked. Teenagers typically are rebellious and don't want to listen to their elders as they create new languages that their parent age adults do not understand as they alter definitions, create new words, and, and so on, thinking they've got a secret language that nobody else can understand. But Steven Spielberg found out about this class and made a special guest appearance and got to sit down with them to explain the horrors of Nazi Germany. As a, it should be personal to everybody on Earth. The Nuremberg Trials set worldwide rules that were supposed to be followed so that such an atrocity could never happen ever again. I don't know if I'm going to make it through this video. In Schindler's List, it talks about how the Germans were keeping Jews prisoner within Germany. They were identified as Jews. There was a color-coded system. I should make sure to put that in the beginning pictures with the thumbnail. <clears throat> and even those who were uh, considered labeled gay were given a, uh, a sign to be identified with similar to having a sexual identity on a driver's license, Utah. I warn you, I warn you, and you just don't care. And of course then there's Schindler's List. It was a list of those he was secretly making passports for them to leave Germany because the Germans weren't letting Jews leave. And so you've probably heard of others who had uh, secret evacuations of Jews to get them out of the country to save their lives. And according to the author of uh, Moroni and the Swastika, he tells the story of, of uh, at least one Mormon who likewise tried to help Jews escape Nazi Germany. But the church 
the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, had punished him for having done so. Article of Faith number 12 does not say we support abusive ty tyrannies, authoritarian governments. We support righteous laws that protect the people. The Doctrine and Covenants backs this up. With a letter to all governments. Nonetheless, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints aided and abetted Hitler's Nazi Germany. Psychologists were used by Nazi Germany to create the labels Stanley Smith Stevens here in America formulated that categorization dichotomous and non-dichotomous it was used in science for objects and here he turned it into a behavioral category in order to allow states to uh, lock up anybody they disapproved of. And so uh, Russia in 1960s likewise utilized psychologists for that purpose to lock up their political opponents. Oh, they're mentally ill. They're running against me. Well, they must be insane. Lock them up. President Kennedy had signed into law the act that did away with America's asylums. Or at least he was supposed to have done so. The state of Utah, as I've told you, still have their asylum and it's in the same pattern that the church deceives Mormons and the world into thinking they're a harmless Christian church. Oh, we don't practice polygamy. That's not us. Oh, we're not racist after 1978. That's not us. We're not sexist. We're not bigoted. Well, we are bigoted, but it, we don't call it bigoted. We call it religious freedom. Nazi Germany was not atrocious because of the swastika turned on its end, just like the inverted pentagram. It was not atrocious because of the uniforms they wore or the titles of the SS. That's not for the name Adolf Hitler. It was for the doctrines that they believed justified the inhumane treatment that the Nuremberg trials denounced. And so just changing your uniform, changing your title, changing your symbol, changing your name does not change your core belief. that what is what needs to be changed and that did not get changed here in the state of Utah what was done with Operation Rio Grande 
was horrific. The church was sick and tired of panhandlers at Temple Square. And so they went to the government, tried to have a homeless arrested for panhandling. The government said, well, we really can't do that. And so they created another system, more devious, thinking the public would never catch on. And they wouldn't. I'm the only one who caught on to it. I'm the only one reporting on it. They devised a way to build the Gateway Mall right across the street from the shelter so that they can pull the homeless, the panhandlers, to the mall away from the Temple Square. Not understanding that the panhandlers had already organized themselves into a gang of panhandlers and that you have leaders over a group of homeless and they would stake out territories throughout the bus lines and now the tracks train lines and so certain spots you'd see the same people each and every single day panhandling well they had one who is the leader of their gang and all the money would go to them to be given back out to the others in the gang. It was the same type of organization. This was a survival technique and is what happens when you have authoritarian governments. You have counter governments in order to survive. And so yes, the panhandlers were the same panhandlers day in and day out. But apparently they were unaware that that was the case, that that was the organization involved. But nonetheless, they were hoping, expecting, that the panhandlers would stay away from Temple Square and go to the gateway. And it was built, they opened it, and sure enough, there were homeless panhandlers there at the gateway, hanging out at the stores. And the business owners were not happy because they thought that people were avoiding the Gateway Mall because of the panhandlers. And I understand when I got freed from Utah's concentration camp in 2014, I tried looking for a Barnes and Noble to get certain books and uh, found that there was one in the Gateway but I couldn't figure out how to get there. And so I walked down the one way and then uh, ended up in front of the old train depot place where they were all hanging out right by the, the shelter. And I knew immediately that with that big of a gang hanging out at the shelter, that would not be good for me to walk right through them. On my mission in New York, New York, I likewise was smart enough to know not to walk through a small group of teenagers. Yep, Augustine. Nonetheless, uh, individual teenagers, they're fine, easy to manage. But when you get more than one together, you get a recipe for destruction and danger. So yeah, I didn't go to Barnes and Noble that day and waited for another day when I found out how to get there through another method, another route. And so the business owners complained to the city and hey, the homeless panhandling is chasing away all our customers. 
well, that's not going to do any good. That's going to backfire. They'll have to close down the gateway and make it a ghost mall. So, what do we do? I know. Let's arrest them for panhandling again. Well, we can't really do that. We have to have some other cause. Let's call them drug addicts. And yeah, there are those that do drugs. And those that do drugs try to get others who are homeless to do drugs. Get them addicted so that they have to then steal in order to supply the drug habit. They know what they're doing. But, uh, yeah, one legislature, dear God, he spends only one night, and then the next day, I got revelation from God, I know exactly how to fix this problem, and he made it worse. We know him by his fruits as an ass. So yeah, his plan was to arrest them. They cleared out the Salt Lake County Jail, moved people to other jails in Utah, so that they would have enough space for the homeless. And then, as is the practice in Utah, the cops just arrest you. They don't know the law. They have to memorize the codes, but no, they let the prosecutor deal with whether or not they're going to file any charges if they don't get the person to confess to some kind of guilt. Because that's the whole thing. The cops bring them into the Salt Lake County Jail, they sit there and rot, their lives are ruined and destroyed, unless, well, unless, well, if they plead guilty, they're able to go back to see if they can try to repair what they can, but now they've got a record, they've pled guilty, they're now criminals. They were tortured for a confession, and they gave in so that they can have a life. They can get their life back. And once you get a criminal record, they can just blame you for anything in the future. You are now a historical criminal. And they don't bother to investigate crime. Nope. They just lock you up, keep you there until you confess. There is no constitutional right of a speedy trial. It does not exist in the state of Utah. And of course they also have their concentration camp for those who refuse to plead guilty. Well, he must be mentally ill if he's not going to accept the responsibility for what he did. And so likewise, the homeless are all considered mentally ill. Obviously, they're to blame for being homeless. It's not the government not regulating the economy. And so, yeah, that incident resulted in a lack of enough police to round everybody up. So they started pulling other agencies in, paying overtime, and it was becoming a bit more expensive than they originally planned. And then once they got him in jail, they were not taking advantage of the drug courts or the mental health courts. Well, why not? <laughs> you know, when the shelters were first built after that fiasco, oh, I guess we better build shelters. Locking them up didn't work. The mental homes don't have homes. No more beds. I'm the one who gave you the breaking news that the University of Utah's CEO over the mental health department had plotted with our new governor, Cox, to purposely cause the spread and escalation of the virus in order to 
lock more people up in their beds at the hospital. The hospital. Again, it's a cover. It's not a hospital, it's a concentration camp. It's run by psychos rather than medical doctors. But the state of Utah elevates them to legitimate authority in courts and for drug pushing. with fallacy arguments to justify their existence. I've gone over this with you. And so they destroy people's lives. And once your life is destroyed, you can't come back from that. You need assets. When I was a kid, my peers would say, well, it takes money to make money. Yeah, it does. You know, when you leave the home, go on your mission, come back, graduate, or go to BYU, you find a cute little girl, marry her, well, oh, whoops, what do we do now? Where do we go? Because it's kind of humiliating to go back to mommy and daddy's home with your new wife and start having babies. Unfortunately, many Mormon kids have had to do that because of the economy. Not because they're bums, lazy bums just mooching off the system of their parents. No, it's the economy. And so other kids, you know, they get credit cards and they go into debt to get the home, get the cars, get the credit cards and then they get over their, in over their heads they're forever in debt and that causes stress in the home and results in there there is no accurate number because the church won't give us the accurate information but it's around over 80% 80% of Mormon families end up divorced at least one point in time in their lives. And so the, the numbers of those who remarry are not factored in to that percentage. But once you are economically destroyed, you can't get out. The homeless can't just go get a job. $7.50 is less than a living wage. Do you understand what a living wage is? That's the amount of money, according to the economy, that it takes in order for a basic living with all essentials. Food, clothing, shelter, communication, transportation, but our government refuses to acknowledge a living wage here in Utah, let alone the federal government that refuses to raise the minimum wage for the nation, because Utah won't go above for their minimum wage whereas other states do. New York, I think, goes over $7.50. I would hope so. Cost of living is far higher. It was the second highest when I went to New York on my mission, and they didn't have an equal payment plan back in those days. <sighs> Lost 50 pounds on my mission. Parents claim that the reason why they weren't happy to see me get off the plane was because they were in shock about how much I'd lost weight. I'd literally look like a skeleton ghost. <sighs> but uh, now we have a situation where the prophets are murdering us. And if you don't believe that, 
Dear God, what is wrong with you? They're the cause of it here in Utah because they leave the church, the temples, and missions open. They aren't protecting you. They're murdering you. And all the thumbs down you give me that no one else can see isn't changing me. Oh, I guess I better conform and comply. You're threatening me with a thumbs down. That's what Nazi Germany did. They threatened the populace. They had individual citizens recruited to be in the police force. The neighborhood watch. I was a neighborhood watch president in this area in 2016. We went from being concerned about the homeless and the gangs after I had chased them out to going after each other. Oh, you didn't mow your lawn. We better call the city and report you. So yeah, and people stopped coming to the meetings and it just dissolved. Fred Cox tried to take over because he wanted to run again because he had lost by one vote. So he was trying to become the neighborhood president in order to use that as his resume to justify getting back in and he lost. And <laughs> yeah. I understand his street got a sign. I saw that the other day after all these years but uh, now we, they have Utahns going around doing the acts of murder on behalf of the church Mormons are going to church today they didn't learn from the last two weeks So, yeah, we all know exactly what's going to happen on Wednesday's reporting as Monday and Tuesday are likewise going to be high as well for the weekend numbers. But uh, starting Wednesday, it'll take off even higher. We all know this. This has been the pattern because church is the super spreader. And it doesn't matter if Nelson tells Mormons to wear face masks and get vaccinated and, and socially distance because he's not setting the right example. He has to close the church. And he won't. He doesn't care about you. Mormons are Utah's Jews in their concentration camp. And it's the practices, the precepts that are used in the state of Utah that are exactly the same as Nazi Germany. So no, we don't have an SS. We don't have, you know, the Nazi symbol except on the certain neo-Nazi gang we have here in Utah. And the graffiti. There was something in the news the other day about that. I think it was at the University of Utah, wasn't it? Where the white supremacist neo-Nazis spray-painted swastikas along with hate speech against black students. And the church does have the symbol of Lucifer still. It's on the keystone of the doors of the Salt Lake Temple. But the church has covered it up with a wall. 
So now they've closed down that area because of the reconstruction. I mean, do I need to, to go over the, the scripture from Mormonism about covering up your sins? It's the part where men are frozen. Many are called, but few are frozen. And why are they frozen? Because they lock themselves in the freezer. But they didn't learn the one lesson. Stay out of Utah. I was dumped here by the first wife. Tricked by my mom. Oh yeah, the Olympics are coming in 2002. Lots of businesses. Yeah, no. She lied. She wanted me to come and build their basement. And then she betrayed me because I didn't build their basement. And because she helped her and the kids leave me. And so yeah, my life is over. This is what they do to people. I came to the church and said, hey, Joseph Smith is a translator. Oops! I never realized that was the key to destroying the church, exposing them as frauds, criminals, terrorists, anti-government seditious. They want to overthrow this government so that they can restore Deseret Nation. That's why there's that Mormon gang, Desnat. I've been going over it with you. The church attacked me. Remember, this is how I was destroyed. I did this video, and boom. We're coming for you, Travis. Stop it now, and maybe we'll let you go. They don't. Extortion threats, you already know you're dead. And so even if they are holding your family hostage, like the two-hour special on uh, Body of Proof for season three, you have to accept that you've lost your family, you've lost your loved ones, you've lost your life. If you give in to their demands, you will be tortured with the punishment. They take away your assets so that you cannot pull out. You cannot get out with your own bootstraps or whatever that phrase is of white supremacy. Pull yourselves up by your own bootstraps. And so, whether my mom's death is just revenge for what she did to me by God, because I didn't do it, I didn't even know she died. I had, I did the video where I look it up on the internet. Oh, there she is. Whoa. And then uh, Joe had to help me with uh, the funeral being the week after, not the next day. But, uh, yeah, I, I have no idea if I'm going to get any of the life insurance, if I'll get it in time, because my life is over. And I can't just get a car and drive away. They took away my driver's license. They. They refused to let me. I had to lie to the DMV officer. And so I know how to drive. That was my job for most of my life, was driving. Back in high school, driving. Those were the jobs I had. Pizza delivery, claim form deliverer. <clears throat> and so, yeah, I know how to drive stick. I know how to drive truck. I know how to drive all, all of it. When they locked me up in the concentration camp. I was a federal officer for the Draper Post Office delivering mail. Yeah, they're federal officers. They 
don't care about the federal government. They want to overthrow it. They want to practice crime again. They want their religious freedom to be racist, sexist, and bigoted again. And when they accomplish it, yeah, remember your driver's license identifications that you thought was a great progressive move on the part of the Utah legislature? Oops! Now you're going to be rounded up. And they're going to resume conversion therapy that they just barely stopped because they got caught. They've been practicing it this whole time. You do not understand the evil danger that awaits all of us. As you guys are more focused on being upset with me than with them who are the cause. Who are trying to murder you. And this is what Germans did not understand. And so you had the Swing Kids. Great movie, by the way. Highly recommend it. The boys looked at porn and then were enemies of the state. Oh, I gotta hurry up. It's getting too hot in there. Starting to get that egg. And so, yeah, I'm getting cast out. I just uploaded the video that Utah is going to be destroyed as it is in the progress of being destroyed right now. It's not some future thing after I leave, after I'm cast out. I've already been cast out spiritually, and it's now a countdown. Whether I get money from my mother to leave, having to pay somebody to drive me, because there's too many ticket-happy cops. And Utah does not like letting people go. See, because I'd have to walk and only carry what I can carry. Because they don't want people leaving. They raise the cost of homes so that people can't afford them. And yet they can't afford to move out of Utah. People are getting tortured to death. Not just with the abomination of desolation. And so the homeless, they just increase the homeless population. They can't do anything. They're helpless. You can send all the psychos and caseworkers at them you want. That's not going to solve the problem. It never has. They don't do anything. All they did it was so that the homeless can now be labeled as homeless. They've gotten ID'd, fingerprinted as criminals, and now they're ID'd. And it's not for their good. Again, it's the same reason why driver's licenses now allow for your own sexual identity. It's because once they flip the switch and become Desnat, they now can identify you and lock everybody up. Because no one will stop them at that point. No one will dare say no because they become their own nation and anybody who disagrees will be locked up as well this is what Brigham Young did he was at war with the United States as, mayor, as governor after governor judge after judge kept getting booted out sheriff after sheriff
And so when I hear Nelson get up at his solemn assembly and say, hey, we're working with Russia, we've paid them money, and then you hear in the news, oh, Russia is hacking us, cyber attacking us, cyber terrorism. Oh, hmm. Where'd they get that money from again? Hmm. Because we certainly don't have a temple. They're involved in terrorism. Trying to overthrow America. And so, Kazakhstan? That's in the news lately. The president just called for Putin's help. And so Putin's sending in his armies. Because does he want Kazakhstan back? Yeah. Does he want Belarus back? Yeah. Does he want Ukraine back? Yeah. Do you see what they're all doing around the world now? So China, warring with Hong Kong, because they're too liberal. So they shut down the press during the coronavirus, where they locked everybody up to stop the virus. Oh, they're concerned about their people. No, it was for control. They have now conquered Hong Kong. Now they're going after Taiwan. America did nothing for Crimea or for Hong Kong. We just expressed our frustration. Oh, we're upset with you. You stop. Yeah, whatever. You're not stopping us, so why should we listen to you? And purposely provoking Biden to war, and Biden just says, nope. You stop. I'll be mean. I'll get angry. I'll get K-pop after you. Or whatever his childhood friends were. They've already declared war on America. And our government just sits back and takes it. church is just going, oh, please hurry before Travis exposes too much more. YouTube is failing to silence Travis on YouTube. He's still getting videos out. He's still exposing more of us. Even after we've destroyed his life and he's going to be gone, it's not quick enough for us. He's still doing videos. Yeah, it, it is a great escape for anybody to get out of Utah. And Utahns purposely, they have that slogan, if you don't like it, leave. That's what I was told when I first got here. If you don't like the inhumane treatment that we cause on other humans, leave and you can't report to the authorities because they're all in on it. They're all compromised. This is one big authoritarian police state to protect the church, to restore Desnat. And our government is clueless. Oh, I don't see anything. Uh, Edmunds Tucker Act? Uh, it, it was it was rescinded in 1978 when the church allowed blacks to the temple and, and the priesthood. Huh. That's strange. Same here, huh? Exactly. The church purposely got the United States to drop it so that they can then go into phase two. Which is already... We're in like phase five or six now. <laughs> We're in the final phases. As 
Oax is going around spouting religious freedom to start polygamy again. Polygamy! I'm going to be the president of polygamy! We must overthrow America! And the little black book. Dear God, the church is involved with a secret combination of America seeking to overthrow it. Oaks is directly connected with members of that group, and Mormons and Skousens are have been involved in it. We are living in a worst-case scenario for the latter days. I knew it was going to be bad. I didn't realize this bad. That my own church, that has scriptures warning me about it, would actually be the ones <laughs> involved with it. But that's the whole con. Is that uh, they're using the text, but they're the ones that are the fulfillment of the warning. I mean, that's devious. To murder Joseph and Hiram, take over his organization, and completely alter it and fool all Mormons into thinking it's the exact same church because they say the name. Oh, Joseph! Oh, was it his birthday? Oh, was did he just die? Was that the anniversary of his death? Oh, well, I don't know. July 24th, that's more important. When we murdered the native inhabitants to establish our Deseret, but then the big bad mean America came in and overthrew us. So we fought back, kicking out their governors and judges and sheriffs. This is our land, this isn't your land. <laughs> From the crossroads of the west to the Pacific Isles. Stream waters, da, 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 da. This land was made just for me, not you. So, dear God, Mormons, how could you have fallen so far that you can't see what's happening right before your eyes? So that's the whole thing about the church of the great and abominable church of the devil. It has nothing to do with the outward appearance, though yes, it's blatant and obvious. The sign of Lucifer on the keystone of the Salt Lake Temple. But the doctrinal principles and precepts of Lucifer and his plan of happiness. Oh, it's happiness. Yay. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll put myself into bondage for happiness. <laughs> oh, I have to be happy and not be miserable. Because it's all me that has to change my attitude. I have to be positive about the bondage I'm in. Okay. Thank you, psychologist. I should just get over it. And be happy that I'm alive and in bondage. In the state of Utah. In the Mormon church. And so... Righteousness is not a factor, being related or a best friend of those who are already in authority are the ones who get you into authority. And so if you're just an elder, you need to be happy where you are. Even though section 76 says you got to be a high priest in order to be exalted. But once you're washed in the temple, you are a high priest. But the Great Nepal Church sort of confuses all that. But, you know. This is why Joseph Smith says that you need to have a man like Moses free Mormons from bondage. This is the bondage he talked about. I see it. Of course, I'm the one who figured it out. But, I mean, I didn't realize it was that bad of a bondage growing up. But now I've lived it firsthand, and I know exactly what it's talking about. I am in bondage just like all of you are. And they've cast me out. And so, yes, it's a coincidental timing of my mom's death. She was too young, 77. Dear God, what happened? 
she was supposed to die after my dad because my dad's in worse health than she is so what happened why did she die on the 21st which may be just in time for me to get the life insurance if I'm included as a beneficiary <laughs> but regardless of whether I'm saved because of my mom's death or whether I have to leave because I'm cast out in complete and utter ruin I still will be leaving and I ain't on no Schindler's list we have nobody doing that here in Utah because nobody realizes that we are in such a horrible condition here in Utah to get people out of Utah I mean, where are we gonna go to another Nazi state of Arizona or Idaho or Wyoming or Colorado <laughs> we're kinda trapped And yeah, the Republicans, the MAGA, like, they're not Republicans anymore, they're MAGA. I don't know why the news keeps saying GOP and Republican and conservative, they're MAGA. The Republican Party is dead and gone. But nope, they keep deceiving the public, thinking that they can give us hope that we can come out of this as a nation. Well, they're all talking about sedition seceding from the nation having Democrat states and MAGA states well there's a problem with that because once we give in then there will be civil war as the MAGA states will then war against the Democrat states because there will be enough MAGA still in the Democrat states to say help we need help they're keeping us in bondage they're taking away our religious freedom to overthrow them with a coup. We'll help you. Yeah, so we're already in civil war. It's just not turned into a bloody one that we all think it is. Not quite yet. There are skirmishes of police officers shooting unarmed black people and Karens reporting on people being black. Officer, that man is black. Arrest him. Uh, but yeah, here in Utah, officer, that man is an antichrist. He doesn't believe in Mormonism. He's a, an ex-Mormon, anti-Mormon. Arrest them. What? I'm sorry, you're an ex-Mormon. We don't serve your kind here. No shirt, no shoes, no temple recommend, no service. Ah. That's a title, isn't it? It is sad. Mormons are in need of rescuing. And they don't understand that they need to be rescued. They end up serving the prophets as murderers to do their dirty work for them. And I'm really getting a headache with the temperature increase here. So I gotta end. So, yeah, with turning on the fan to cool things down, that reminds me about how polluted Utah is. In the air, in the water, in the soil, this place is just polluted. And it's causing health problems, not just for me, but for others here in Utah. And it's causing damage to people who are normally healthy otherwise and so yeah all of us need to get out of Utah for our health and they won't let us leave they keep us here they are seriously the, the worst threat ever 
and they're fooling everybody into thinking that they're just a religion. Jesus! So yeah, we need a we need an underground movement to get people out of here. And we've got no one who's willing to do that. That's that's what's sad. Because nobody recognizes the danger that we face. So now all I